Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. Today I'm going to talk about a visual proof that I found on LinkedIn that was posted in the mathematics section. And there are some problems with it, but it can be fixed so that it actually turns out to be not a bad proof at all. So without further ado, this is very simple. It's aimed at the high school level, and I think it will give you an idea of how these things work. So let's begin. So <clears throat> some time ago, uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Some time ago, somebody posted this graphic that I'm pointing to on the right side here with a red and yellow uh, shading and said it's a visual proof of these two identities, sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x, and cos 2x is cos squared x minus sine x squared. Now, there are several ways to prove this uh, using the trigonometric identities. You can start with the one side and show that it's equal to the other side, and that's a sufficient proof. That's normally what we do with trigonometric identities. And both of these here can be proved using the sum and difference formulas for for sine and cosine so they're not hard to prove but this uh, little diagram on the side here is slightly misleading okay so first of all before i come back to the diagram let's see whether this is a proof or not so first of all is such a construction always possible so can we have a situation where we have two equal angles as we have here and a third angle as we see here in this case and the answer is yes we can because uh, if this vertex is positioned at the center of the circle then obviously we could move this uh, this uh, point here down until this here will coincide with this uh, radius or diameter so it's really just a simple rotation and we'll see that we can actually construct a rectangle which has 90 degrees here as well and this has 90 degrees here and therefore these two triangles are similar and so the construction is possible but then we look at the special case where we have a hypotenuse of length one and ask ourselves well uh, yes in this case here the blue <clears throat> the blue length is exactly the sine ratio but what happens if the hypotenuse is not uh, also, the, it's not one, okay? So then will this still be sine, the length of this? That's the next question. In other words, does it hold in a more general case? And finally, is the proof also valid for non-right angle triangles? So this here is a right angle triangle, but will it work for any other triangle? The answer to that is yes. I'll come back to the answers of these two in a moment. But the answer to this is yes, because we're really dealing with right angle triangles and the same angle in the case of these identities. So it doesn't matter whether it's scalene or isosceles or anything else uh, in terms of uh, whatever the triangle might be. So, uh, we first of all, we can prove that it will work in other cases by looking at similar triangles. Okay, so what I did here is I constructed a similar triangle to this big one, but now you'll see that the blue length here is not actually sine x. Uh, if, if, for example, I move this, okay, so the blue length, the actual value of sine x will be this length divided by this dotted green line, okay, so it will not be equal to uh, the value of sine x in the case of when the hypotenuse is 1. Right. And of course, it doesn't matter what uh, x is. As you can see here, we can always have that angle. Okay. So it works in every case. And, and of course, if we wanted to get to where we were in the beginning, uh, we could simply let this coincide with that one. And we'd have the same result. So sine x squared is not necessarily the, uh, by the way, I've written sine x here because that was in the diagram, but sine x is actually this length. It's not really sine x. It's just the length of the blue line in this case. It's only sine x as well 
if the hypotenuse is 1, okay? So <clears throat> we see then that it does hold in the special case as well, okay? Now, um, what is angle measure? Angle measure is a means of measuring angle so that every angle has a unique measure. And the only way to do that is to compare the arc length of an angle. So if we're comparing this angle here, this between this x between the red line and the gray line, then it's defined or represented by the ratio of this short arc length dotted line to the entire radius, okay? That is what is a measure. And every angle has a unique measure that way, okay? So if you rotate it round, and round and round, it will all this ratio here will always be unique. And of course, degree measure is random. So uh, degree measure is uh, not really true circular measure. You can have any number of degrees you like in a circle. And so now, uh, Wilberger, Professor Wilberger, has something called rational trigonometry, and he talks about quadrants and spread uh, in his so-called new rational trigonometry. But it's neither rational and it, it doesn't really add any benefits. Uh, in fact, it's more obfuscated than anything else in my opinion. Not that I dislike Wilberger, he's a very nice guy. I've communicated with him. I just don't think rational trigonometry adds anything uh, or makes uh, ordinary Greek trigonometry uh, any simpler and better. So. That's what angle measure is. Now, let's go back to this. So basically, we've seen that such, when we see a, a visual proof like this, uh, I mean, a visual proof like this, we must always check whether there's no trickery involved because sometimes you can set up a special case and say, wow, okay, that proves it. So this side is sine 2x, etc. And it's, in this case here, it's generally true, even if it's not one, but the length of this is no longer sine x, it's something else, okay? So that's what you check for always when you see something that's called a visual proof. <laughs> and of course, uh, you check if it works in the general case and if it's also valid for all types of triangles, which in this case it is. So what I wanted to do here is give you <clears throat> a brief demonstration of, this, uh, of these two very simple identities in trigonometry and if you're a high school student you can download this applet i'll provide a link to it and you can play with it you can move any of the green dots by the way and and see what happens and if you do that you can put this back to one you know the hypotenuse back to one and then see that it actually will coincide with the hypotenuse i'm not going to get one exactly but there you go when you move it like that, okay? And any of those similar triangles will work. Well, uh, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on that. If you're a high school student, you should find this pretty useful. And as I promised in the past, uh, further to my previous introduction to trigonometry, I said I produce more videos, so this is another one. And in the future, I'll try to produce a few more. If you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe, share the news of this channel, <clears throat> and I will try to keep producing videos as long as I am physically able. Uh, it's not easy for me because my eyesight is not good, and I'm not really earning anything from this. But the fact that I can help aspiring young mathematicians to free themselves of the rot in mainstream and to understand why trigonometry works, why mathematics works, why calculus works, that gives me great pleasure. So if you haven't already downloaded my free ebook on calculus, the new calculus, I'll also place a link to that in the details section. And that is all for this video, my friends. I hope you all stay safe and will speak to you as soon as I can again. Take care. Bye-bye.